Hello, my name is Paul Mackay from Analog Wonderland and today we are going to be revealing the first round successful applicants to the Film Photography Community Fund. Now before we get into those successful applicants, a quick summary of what this is all about. During the second half of last year, we gave all of you the option to donate tips at checkout should you wish to that would go towards projects that benefit the future of film photography and wonderfully a lot of you did contribute £2,000 in fact which was incredible so I left it quite vague at the time. £500 of that has gone to charity to support young people through what has been a extraordinarily tough time which has left us £1,500 available to support projects that benefit the future of the UK film photography community. Today we are going to be revealing the five successful applicants and what is really exciting about this is that this will cover your interests if you are into <laughs> cameras <laughs> of any kind. If you are into environmental sustainability and the way that film photography is impacted by that and what that could be for the future. If you have ever thought about selling your print, if you think that the future of film photography needs somebody who is going to be able to teach new people about the hobby in a fun, exciting, engaging way, if you're into analogue movie processing and shooting, anything like that, there is going to be something in this for you. Rather than me tell you any more details about it, we're going to have videos from representatives of each of the five successful organisations who are going to tell you a little bit about themselves, a little bit about the project, frankly what's in it for you if their project should be successful and how they have used their portion of the fund in order to move it forward, make it closer to coming to life. So please sit back, relax, enjoy and support. Thank you very much. Hi everyone, my name is Nils and I make pinhole cameras. I'm a photographer and I've been messing around with pinhole cameras since getting an undo a few years ago. I'm also a product designer and so since then I have designed and made several cameras of my own. Uh, usually a camera starts with an idea that I want to test, so um, a camera to take underwater with me or a camera made from skills and materials found in a particular place. I've applied to the Film Photography Community Fund um, for help with this project which is a modular pinhole camera. And this is a camera which I hope can help um, photographers experiment with lots of different ideas when making photographs. So, how might it do that? Well, the camera is constructed of a few simple elements which can easily and quickly be put together and disconnected. This allows different lenses, shutters, film guides, masks and bodies to be combined and recombined. This way, you can build cameras which allow you to experiment with the images you create. It can also be a fun way to learn about how cameras work. So far, I have built a few of these modules to test. For example, film guides with flat and curved film planes, and shutters with multiple pinholes. Sustainability is really important. The cameras are designed so that they can be completely disassembled and all dissimilar materials separated out, meaning some can be reused and others can be recycled. At the moment, the cameras are 3D printed um, and I've been using a recycled plastic material to print them from. I've applied to the Film Photography Community Fund to help me prototype some of these cameras and get them out into the wild and into the hands of photographers like you. I'd like to get some feedback on the design to help improve it um, and to help inform how I might make the cameras more widely available in the future. With support from the fund, I'm going to produce four prototypes, both 35mm and 120 sizes, um, and I'll be inviting photographers to test them, make some pictures and give some feedback. I'll put out an open call for those interested in taking part, so look out for some more details of this soon. Um, I'd also really love to hear from the whole community if there are any modules that you'd really love to see um, in a camera like this. This could be a, a wacky lens or shutter setup or an actual lens instead of a pinhole um, or perhaps different film formats or image ratios. And finally, thank you very much to Paul and Mary and everyone who's contributed to the fund. It's a really great thing. 
Um, and thanks to you for being interested in the project and I look forward to sharing more details with you soon. Hi everyone, we're two of the guys that are behind front. My name's Jamie. Hi, I'm Luke. So I'm going to tell you about what we're doing with Front. There is a lot to what we're doing, but the easiest way to explain it in a nutshell is that we are creating a website where photographers can upload their work and sell prints directly to their customers. However, we're, uh, we take care of all the printing and the shipping. Um, so we're photographers ourselves and in the past we've tried to sell prints online and found it quite a difficult thing to do. We've also tried to buy prints online and again found it to be a real struggle. It's really time consuming, it can be really costly and it's difficult to know how is best to go about it. Recently we started looking for a website that could take care of all the difficult parts of it and we couldn't really find anything out there that was suitable. So we just decided to build our own platform. But ultimately we wanna make it easier for other photographers to make money from their work whilst making it as hassle-free as possible. Even though we're working hard on lots of exciting things and building the website ourselves, we can't wait to release this information. It's not as easy or as cheap as you might think to get an idea like this off the ground. So the money that we've been given will actually go on pretty boring things, mainly like the back-end server costs. If you want to support us, if you'd like to know more about when we launch and all the exciting stuff that we're working on, um, you can register to our mailing list on our website, uh, which is front.photography. And we also have um, Instagram, front.photography underscore. So if you follow us on there, we're posting updates on what we're doing with Front. And if you use our hashtag as well, we're always sharing our followers' work. And in terms of when are we launching, when are we going live, fingers crossed as soon as possible. Uh, we're hoping for an April, May launch short time. We want to finish off by saying a huge thank you to Analog Wonderland and the Community Fund for everything they're doing. Cheers, Bye. guys. Bye. Bye. Hola, how are you doing? Nice to be here with you. Let me introduce myself, I'm Bravina and I'm a professional film photographer and the founder of If We Film. If We Film is a project whose main mission is to help, to inspire and to provide with full confidence to anyone who wants to start in the world of analog photography, from handling the cameras, to taking the photograph, to giving a physical form on paper or, or a digital form as well, like scans. And all these key knowledge are transferred through film photography courses, one-to-one -one mentoring sessions, and videos on both YouTube and other platforms. Until recently, I've been doing face-to-face -face analog photography workshops in both Bristol and in London, with a very good response and feedback from students. But as you may know, uh, well, something very unexpected happened at a global scale, and well, that made me take a very difficult decision of cancelling all the workshops until further notice. I strongly believe though that even though we don't know why, uh, everything that happens in our lives happens for a reason. There is like a reason behind that will benefit us in the long term. So that's why I embarked myself on this wonderful journey of creating online film photography courses, both in English and in Spanish. Uh, yeah, in my mother tongue, as you probably guessed. <laughs> Although there is a big but here. Um, look, the truth is that I bought online courses from other fields and to be honest I was quite disappointed with them because they were either super extremely boring or because they didn't delve that much into what I really wanted to learn. That's why these online film photography courses that I'm created are totally different from what's on the market at the moment because apart from the fact that I create them from like with all my heart. These courses are super close, super interactive. Like whilst I'm explaining concepts, I will ask you to, to touch your camera, to do exercises with me. And why not? Whilst we have fun and laugh together because uh, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I have to admit it. There will be some bad jokes as well in them. Sorry. <laughs> so, so yeah, I, to be honest, I've never been that convinced of anything what I've done in my life but I know it sounds like an exaggeration but honestly uh, 
because I truly know for sure that these courses are going to create a huge impact in the film community. I have to say that I'm super, super grateful for being selected for the Film Photography Funds proposed by Analog Wonderland. And because thanks to that, I will be able to buy a one year of hosting on the Thinkific platform where all my courses will be. So, eternal thanks to Paul, to Mary and obviously to all of you, to the film community, because without any exaggeration at all, like no lies here, honestly, this is a lifesaver for me. Yep. At the moment, I'm still recording videos for the first beginner course and obviously when I finish recording them, I will still need a little bit of extra time because I will be setting up everything by myself on the platform. But hopefully, and fingers crossed, it will be everything ready by mid-April. Any help, it's always very, very helpful uh, and especially if is there any web developer in the room. And honestly, thank you, thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity because this is for me a super great chance to, to you know, to, to follow my dream and to... I know it sounds very cheesy, okay, but uh, yeah, okay, I will cut the chit chat. <laughs> anyway, thank you so much and, and I'll see you shortly. Muchísimas gracias. Hasta luego. Adios. Hello, my name is Chris Stowe and I am representing Film B Co-op, a, uh, a filmmaking, experimental filmmaking collective in Newcastle who work at the Star and Shadow Cinema. And we are very fortunate to have received, very grateful to have received £350 from the Analog Wonderland Film Photography Community Fund. And we're going to spend it on this incredible machine just behind me, which is called the Lorlette. And this is a 16mm film processor, a black and white 16mm film processor that we salvaged a number of years ago from an old post office depot in Tring. And at once upon a time, it was in the Museum of the Moving Image on the South Bank, and it was run by the London Filmmakers Co-op. It provided processing services for them. And so here's the machine. Unfortunately, it's, it, was used, it was a museum exhibit, so it wasn't really functioning, but we had a go at mending it. We never quite worked out how to do it perfectly, but so uh, I'll just show you. Uh, this is the this is the kind of light side, and uh, we're going to replace some bits and bobs down here, some pumps, some uh, compressors. Uh, we're going to put it on prop a proper set of wheels. We're going to we're basically with the money that we've got, we're going to pay a technician to. Spend two days on it, getting it ready so that we can properly sort it out, get it up on some wheels, um, spec the bits and bobs we need to buy, and then we can spend the next few weeks getting up to scratch, which is exciting because at the Star and Shadow we're in the middle of building a new darkroom, a community darkroom, which will be used for photography, stills photography and motion picture film, um, and we'll be running workshops and... The beauty of this machine is that it can process 400 foot of 16 millimeter, black and white 16 millimeter stock at a time. So that means if you've got a 16 mil camera that has a 400 foot magazine, this is the machine that you could use to process your own film. You could come and visit us in Newcastle and we can <laughs> show you how to operate it. Or who knows, maybe we'll even start, uh, start running that as a service. Who knows? Anyway, uh, very glad to be uh, supported by the, by the film and photography community through this fund. So thank you very much and keep, I will keep you posted um, on our new website when that comes out. Okay, thank you. Hey, my name's Ed. I'm the project leader for the uh, Northern Sustainable Darkroom based in Leeds. The Sustainable Dark Room is an initiative that was started by Hannah Fletcher of the London Alternative Photography Collective, and it aims to develop and innovate new methods of working with analog photography that move away from the unsustainable traditions of the past and into a much uh, greener and uh, brighter future. 
Um, the core aspects of the analog process have long been damaging to the environment, if you weren't um, familiar with that, from such things as the content, silver content or the gelatin in film formats to the chemicals utilised in the darkroom. Analog photography is firmly rooted in the unsustainable. Although the popularity of the medium collapsed following digital photography, it's experienced a resurgence in the last decade with sales rising year on year, and yet we're faced with an increasing threat of ecological crisis, climate crisis. So it's about kind of balancing uh, the medium of film with this new uh, reality that we find ourselves within from an ecological, environmental um, and general <laughs> living earth perspective. My interest in sustainable practices started early on with the use of caffeinol. You might have heard of that. It's an alternative non-toxic developer, typically made out of instant coffee, but you can use regular coffee as well. This then progressed to me writing a research paper, The Ecology of Grain, in 2019, which was the first ever ecological assessment of animal gelatin in analogue film. I then wrote a follow-up paper for the London Alt Photos Sustainable Darkroom Residencies called Stare into the Caffeinol to Reveal Your Future. And in this, I proposed a network of non-profit permanent photo facilities committed to sustainable alternatives with the entire analog process internalized to eliminate waste and environmental harms. So the Northern Sustainable Darkroom were, came out of this idea on the Sustainable Darkroom movement and it aims to be the first permanent facility of its kind within the sustainable darkroom movement. Supported by East Street Arts up in Leeds, the facility is focused on three main areas whilst existing as a functioning photographic darkroom. So firstly, the research of sustainable alternatives. Secondly, a project-based access for artists and members of the public. And third is a non-profit educational program and resource around the theme of ecology with reference to photography, but also the wider practice of sustainable art and sustainable creativity. For example, in the first case, researching alternatives to developers, gelatin, for instance, we're hoping to make, create a small garden and create our own, grow our own plants to make our own developers that are non-toxic and also sustainably grown. Secondly, in terms of access for artists, we hope to put on a micro residency program with photographers that are wishing to kind of experiment with the material aspects of, of sustainable photography. So less so focused on the content of the project and more as a way of working. So, you know, using the developers or making your own um, sustainable prints with such uh, techniques as Sanotype, etc. And finally, as an educational resource, we hope to put on kind of like free accessible workshops in such things as making your own developer, for example. At the moment, the space is still under construction as we're trying to um, kind of get more funding and, and finish the space. And it's aiming to open at the end of this month, hopefully in time for when restrictions ease and stuff like that. With Analog Wonderland's um, generous donation to our project, we're hopefully going to put the money towards a scanning suite so we can digitize everything we do and show the public and the wider photographic community how sustainable processes are not only fun and um, interesting to use but can also achieve the same level of quality that traditional processes can. So thanks so much to Analog Wonderland for supporting us and keep on shooting sustainably. Thank you.